we've explored together the faces of violence in our faith communities and the games we play, the, the isms that are guiding principles in our life. This week we're exploring the face of violence and the condition which within our culture, which is, I think, a primary breeding ground for violence. That is a condition which, in my opinion, is best described by the phrase, greed is God. Now, greed is defined by Webster as, quote, an intense and selfish desire for something, especially wealth and power. John Rittenbaugh defines greed as a ruthless, self-seeking, and arrogant assumption that others exist for one's own benefit. Now, these definitions of greed uh, really clarify why it is such a ripe breeding ground for violence. Why? Because greeding always affects others. Greed assumes that others exist for the sake of self. Um, the culture in the United States has, uh, is often described as the ultimate triumph of narcissism, self-centeredness. Whatever is best for me is best for all. In the United States, greed is God must be examined as one of the greatest threats to the life and teachings of Jesus. Now, <clears throat> in the Gospel according to Mark, <clears throat> it's recorded that Jesus said, what comes out of a man is what defiles a man. For within, from within, out of the heart of humans comes evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness, all out of greed. As one of the definitions says, a ruthless, self-seeking, and arrogant assumption that others exist for one's own benefit. Jesus certainly addressed the issue that greed can never be God. And the early followers of Jesus um, also named it. In 1 Timothy, we read, But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and hurtful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evils. And it is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced their hearts with many pangs. And then you move from the teachings of Jesus to the early followers and then the teaching of the medieval church who taught that greed was one of the seven deadly sins. Now, we must be clear. The problem is not money. The problem is the love of money. Greed exists and breeds violence when the love 
of money replaces human beings as being the object of empathy and sacrifice. You see, greed is God when persons will sacrifice anything for the sake of having more money or more power. Even when they, by any standard, have enough money and enough power, they still want more. Uh, John Wesley, uh, the founder of the Methodist movement, addressed the difference between the, the given value of money and the love of money when he offered this advice. Earn all you can, save all you can, and give all you can. You see, the difference between accepting the value of money and the love of money is the end product of the formula. Give all you can. The end result is a cup of love, not a self-serving narcissistic idolatry of ruthless self-serving and arrogance that others exist for my benefit. Now, let's just take some examples. Greed breeds violence when corporate profits are allocated to share owners and ownership who already have enough rather than allocating earnings for employees who work to have enough just to have shelter, food, and medical care. A different illustration. I think greed brings violence when persons choose to work 60 to 80 hours a week. They choose that to earn more than they need to provide for what they believe their families and they want and neglect time with their families who need hugs and listening ears during those hours which are being sacrificed for more money or sometimes more power. You see, greed breed, breeds violence when persons elected to office substitute the goal of reelection and personal power for the task of governance. Why are these illustrations of violence? Because the identity, rights, and humanity of others are affected, neglected, and harmed when greed becomes God. Yes, indeed, we've just had a, an election. And the question is, are persons now substituting the art of being reelected for what they are called to do, govern. They already have enough power, but greed is God, leads them to wanting more, another term, rather than govern for the sake of all. See, greed as a breeding ground for violence is often affirmed in very attractive ways. Uh, there's a political movement that heralds prosperity as the heart and soul of the motivation for living. 
when this movement is examined, it becomes clear that this prosperity movement enhances prosperity for the haves while assuring that the have-nots will have less. Now, there's also a religious movement claiming to be Christian using the same attractive buzzword of prosperity. This movement preaches and teaches the prosperity gospel, substituting prosperity rather than the gift of forgiveness as the good news. See, gospel is good news. So all of a sudden, prosperity is the good news rather than forgiveness. You see, both of these movements, a political one, a religious one, that affirm prosperity are the expressions of a prevailing belief that greed is God and celebrate the ruthless policies and beliefs which affirm the haves at the expense of the have-nots. You know, the message of faith for the followers of Jesus is that substituting the good news of the promise of prosperity for the promise of forgiveness and promising prosperity for the haves at the expense of the have-nots are simply contradictory to the life and teachings of Jesus who affirm that the common good of all God's children is what the gospel is all about, revealing that divine agape love is living a life of empathy and sacrifice for others rather than just for self. You see, when the chips were down in the life of Jesus, he always had a preference for the poor because to have more when you have enough is simply ruthless self-serving. You see, to follow Jesus is not a call to self-service. Jesus calls us to live for others. For only as we live for the other will we receive the gift of others living for us. You see, reciprocal divine love within the human community is the experience of the reign of God. Never that greed is God, and therefore it is good. Rather, Wesley might have grabbed hold of something that the end result is what counts. Earn all you can, save all you can, and give all you can is not the love of money. It is using money for others. For your thought and conversation, what are your stories of the celebration that greed is God in the United States today? What's your response to the distinction of John Wesley between recognizing the value of money 
and the love of money. And finally, what's your response to the understanding that Jesus had a preference for the poor? Thank you for being a part of our journey.